Hello and welcome to the Prigya Arora show where we discuss various aspects of law and entrepreneurship with people who have been there and done that. Today we have very inspiring Rolf Clayson with us. He has been a YouTuber, a podcaster, an author and most importantly a patent attorney. Let us directly dive into a conversation with him. So, Rolf, let us start by uh, knowing you, sir. We would be happy to hear your story and why you chose law. Yes, thank you very much for inviting me to your show. Um, I'm very excited to be guests uh, on your show. I'm Rolf Klesen. I'm a patent attorney in Germany um, for uh, since 2007. Um, originally, I, um, I'm a chemist, so I started uh, studying chemistry in uh, Tübingen, Germany, and then went on to another university in Germany, and then finished my studies uh, with a PhD in, German, uh, in, in chemistry at the uh, State University of, um, of New York in Albany, New York. So I lived in, uh, in the US for about five years before returning to Germany in 2001, where I joined a nanotechnology startup company where we um, developed ultra hydrophobic surfaces for glass and for other applications. And uh, as, with, uh, as it is, is with startups sometimes, they go broke. <laughs> and so two years later, they uh, went bankrupt. And um, so I... I always was interested in working with the patent attorneys already uh, when I was doing my PhD, I was uh, the guy who had to um, talk with the patent attorneys because my PhD advisor didn't really like that. <laughs> and so he delegated that to me to explain the inventions that we were uh, doing. And uh, then later at the startup firm, uh, I was uh, in charge of uh, marketing the technology and I was in close contact with the patent attorney um, because uh, to monitor the competition, to see what they are filing, what patents they are filing, what they are working on. Um, and so when they went bankrupt, I um, got, um, I talked to him how to become a patent attorney. And so I, I started that um, in Germany. You have to go basically be an um, apprentice, basically, for about three years with a patent attorney um, and work with a patent attorney. And in parallel, you um, study law for, um, it's not a complete uh, law degree, uh, just a specialized law degree for patent attorneys that you can get in um, uh, two years in parallel to your apprenticeship, basically. And then... After that, you have to work for one year for free, a little bit less than one year for free at the German Patent Office and the uh, um, Federal Patent Court in Germany. And yeah, then in 2007, I uh, um, finished all that and became a German patent attorney and a European patent attorney and then joined um, a law firm, a patent law firm in Cologne, Germany. So. That's how I started to become a patent attorney. And um, yeah, since then, I was always interested in um, creating websites and web services and content. But we can talk about that later, probably. <laughs> we will surely talk about that, uh, Rolf. So thank you for sh sharing the brief overview about your life. So coming to, you know, there are some always some... Uh, life-changing moments for us where we take this so can you share some life-changing moments you had and which or inspirational parts of your career which made you choose a different field yes um, as mentioned i was working for a startup company um, first doing research um, developing these ultra hydrophobic surfaces and then going into marketing. And when this company went bankrupt, um, that was a very tough decision for me to uh, join the patent attorney's profession because once you leave the laboratory or a high-tech company, then you probably don't have the chance to go back because um, the tech companies, they don't take anyone who 
well, who went to become a lawyer <laughs> or, or a patent attorney. They um, usually like people who have experience in the lab and uh, experienced uh, technicians or scientists. And um, so, yeah, so that was a one way street. I had to make the decision whether I want to become patent attorney. And if I chose to do that, uh, then I wouldn't have the chance to go back to be a scientist or researcher or go back to some high tech company um, into the lab. And that was a tough decision. So I really, um, I sent out a lot of applications also to um, high tech firms and other nan nanotech firms, uh, but also to patent attorneys. And this one patent attorney in Cologne, he just was seeking a new um, uh, patent attorney trainee in the field of nanotechnology because he just uh, took over a new big client in the nanotechnology field and it was actually a competitor of my earlier startup <laughs> <laughs> so i knew the technology very well and uh, from the very first meeting on um, it was clear that i had to join this <laughs> because it was just a perfect match and uh, so even before i uh, had my first official day at this uh, patent law firm i already went with him to visit the client <laughs> and <laughs> say hi i'm now on your side not on your competitor's <laughs> side <laughs> so uh, that was quite an interesting uh, move and it was a tough decision because um, i never regret that uh, because uh, it's really cool and the best choice i have ever made in my life because um, being a patent attorney, you always have uh, fresh ideas on your table every day, another another one, and uh, it's intellectually challenging. You have to dive into new technologies every day and try to understand new inventions every day. So uh, that's very cool, and um, uh, it's very exciting to be a patent attorney, I think. <laughs> so, so that was uh, the decision I made, and I don't regret it. <laughs> It draws, you know, it's very interesting to know how 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 the dots connect with each other because sometimes we don't know where we are heading in life, but all our past experience come into picture and it plays a very pivotal role in that. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, and now coming to, as you said, content. So what made you begin con uh, developing content? What was your idea in the first place? How you decided that you'll be doing content? or building up content in this area now? Yes, so um, in the very first, uh, probably the very first um, touch point was uh, my becoming a patent attorney. And um, becoming a patent attorney, I had to uh, always be on, you know, know all the latest decisions in patent law in Germany and in trademark law and uh, get to know the law basically and uh, to be always um, to know the latest news what's happening in the field um, and so i developed i was always programming since i was a teenager programming computers with um, little, little writing little programs and so i wrote a little program website ip news flash uh, where I um, basically crawled all the patent offices and all the, um, the news outlets in this field and um, uh, different courts with their decisions. Um, and I compiled all this and uh, put this all on one page where people can go daily, basically, or were able to go daily and look what's happened uh, in the last 24 hours or in the last week or so in the field of IP in Germany uh, to see all the latest court decisions and uh, office, uh, office uh, um, communications and uh, news in the field. And that became quite popular um, over the years. I started that around 2004 and I think it became quite popular um, among the German IP crowd. Um, and um, then in 2010, I switched law firms and this law firm was a little more progressive, uh, not so old fashioned, let's say. Uh, the previous law firm had trouble with, you know, things like media, like podcasts and YouTube and 
they are now starting that as well, but uh, at that time it was a little difficult uh, to, to do that. So uh, in the new law firm, I was able to start a podcast. Um, um, I was always an avid uh, podcast listener and consumed a lot of podcasts from the very beginning, um, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I thought, well, there is no IP podcast or podcast in the IP field or not much. Um, so I started a German, first a German language uh, podcast about trademarks. Um, and then later in 2014, uh, I'm at the INTA meeting. Probably you know the INTA meeting. It's a big meeting of IP professionals every year. Um, and about 10,000 IP professionals meet. And uh, I attended that regularly. And um, I was meeting all the old friends and buddies from the IP field from all over the world. So um, I met uh, Ken Suzanne, um, who uh, I happened to work with a couple of times, and he was a moderator in his at his college uh, for um, a radio show. And he suggested, "Well, you want to do podcasts, I want to do podcasts. Why don't we do something together?" And we started at the INTA meeting in 2014 to uh, launch our first podcast episode. And since then, we are publishing uh, podcast episodes uh, on our podcast IP Fridays um, uh, at the moment every month. Uh, so a monthly podcast with uh, guests from all, all over the IP field, um, judges and in-house counsel and whoever wants uh, is an interesting guest uh, on the show can join. Even authors talking about IP and all different kinds of people so we are now uh, well into the uh, three digit episodes so over mm -hmm. well over 100 episodes um, and yeah it's a lot of fun to uh, to do that podcast and then uh, in 2015 i i was um, uh, a little bit um, surprised to see that no one really published videos on YouTube about, um, about uh, IP, about patents, trademarks, designs, or not much, and uh, very few videos. And a lot of the videos were not of very good quality. Uh, so I thought, why not um, start a YouTube channel? Uh, I am already doing podcasts. Why not doing video? <laughs> so I started with a small iPad and a small camera and a small um, clamp on mic. <laughs> and so I started small, but uh, I started in 2015. So if you watch my earlier videos, they are not very professional, but I had a steep learning curve. And now they are quite okay, I guess, from the quality standpoint here and wise. And I do some English videos and German videos and it was very cool for me because um, all the keywords that are um, important in that field, for example, patent application or patent attorney or whatever, um, and especially the German words, they were not taken so far. And uh, especially for the German keywords, if you type in Patentanwalt, so which is the equivalent of patent attorney in Germany, um, you just get my video, basically. <laughs> or if you type patent application, the German word Patentanmeldung, you just get my video. So, or Markenrecherche, Trademark Search. Uh, so I was able to get all these keywords to be the top um, video and for lots of these keywords. So that was very helpful to generate a lot of uh, emails coming in, asking me about how to file a patent, how to file a trademark application, and then, um, so that generated a lot of business, but the biggest challenge then was to separate the ones that can pay a patent attorney and that cannot pay a patent attorney. So, um, yeah, it was very interesting learning curve uh, to separate these um, people to be, of course, polite to everyone, but to clearly state that, okay, I have an hourly rate of so-and-so, and if you are happy with that hourly rate, we can continue talking. And if not, uh, you feel free to watch the other videos, the free content, but uh, I cannot help you personally. So that was very important um, learning for me. Uh, and to, yeah, to, to really dig into how to 
get the clients I want and uh, not to um, yeah to be still polite to the other people of course uh, and make them happy as well but uh, not serving them personally so <laughs> Amazing, Rolf. It's, it's so amazing to listen to your story that you have been doing this since a long time now and people are the people like me are just entering into this field and, you know, exploring uh, how to manage content and develop content and things like that. Uh, but uh, as you said, it's good, uh, I think, for uh, both the things, for building up knowledge in the, in the people among us or people around us and also in terms of building clients for us i think it's important it has both the aspects associated with it that if you deliver good knowledge uh, people will uh, would like to come to you and work with you so thank you so much for sharing this so now another question that comes to your mind as you uh, told so much about content marketing that do you have certain uh, strategy in terms of keywords or uh, space focusing specifically on keywords or do you develop content based on whatever the upcoming uh, or whatever the latest news is or something like that? How do you target keywords and everything? Yes, I usually try to avoid uh, content that is picking up the current news because that would not be evergreen. That would be probably popular for a week or so, but then later not. Yeah. So um, I try to focus on evergreen content, so content that is also applicable in two years from now or three years from now. And in the beginning, it was very easy because a lot of the keywords were not taken on YouTube. So there, were not, there was no video on certain keywords. Uh, so it was very easy to be the top one spot uh on youtube so i tried to do a lot of videos the first videos are all general videos like patent attorney patent search trademark search like all these kinds of keywords and then i started looking into you know you can go into google adwords manager and uh, there's a keyword planner tool and you can see what are the people actually searching for and what is the search volume and then um, I typed these search phrases into YouTube and saw what are the videos that are popping up. And there are some um, search phrases that have been um, uh, with quite a considerable search volume, but there was no video at all. So I focused on these uh, search phrases, for example, how to patent an idea. As a patent attorney, we learn that you cannot patent ideas because you can only patent technical concepts or something. But people search for how to patent an idea. So why not do a video about how to patent an idea? So I did a video how to patent an idea and it's my most popular video overall with like 130,000 um, wow. views um, because no one else thought about how making a video how to patent an idea. <laughs> um, and it's basically the only real video about this uh, search phrase. So if people search on Google or on YouTube, um, oh yeah, one thing is that um, Google is also um, serving search results, video search results for YouTube videos if you search on Google for certain keywords. So if you search on Google for how to patent an idea or on YouTube, I'm the top one um, <laughs> Spot. so yeah so and that's a search volume of monthly like 2000 or so or 3000 searches so let's say two-thirds of the people are clicking on my video so that's very um very helpful to think strategically and then a third category that i do is um what comes up in my daily business, um, like what questions always come up and can I explain them in a video? So if people have these questions, um, for example, they write to me, I have this and this problem with an email so I can give them briefly like a suggestion and then tell them, I explained this in detail in this video here and then paste the video URL and then they are very impressed that, oh, wow, you did a video about this, especially exactly my problem. And so, so they are very happy then. Um, 
so that's another thing I focus on, like um, things that pop up quite often. And then I try to make a video about that. Um, so these are all evergreen uh, content ideas, not uh, content ideas that are tied to any current events also. Amazing, amazing. I think this uh, this is absolutely, uh, you know, uh, beautiful because as you said, evergreening is so important that even after 10 years, if someone watches our video, he's able to relate. Like, for example, what is a patent? Obviously, uh, what is a patent is never going to change. Uh, so... Yeah. It is useful because people, are, and I think it can be uh, useful in terms of uh, from a particular location or for from a particular language as well. Like people from Germany, people from Europe would want to follow you because they feel connected to you. They do not have that language barrier. Uh, similarly, right. people from India would like to uh, be with a specific person who knows the language or who understands them well or things like that. So I think everybody should try content marketing and evergreening is definitely a beautiful strategy, especially in terms of video because the content will never die. So thank right. you so um, much. And uh, one thing you just mentioned, what is a patent, right? <laughs> I just typed it in in YouTube and I'm the fourth spot. at, at uh, so, so that's okay. <laughs> to be among the top 10 so yeah i try to exactly try to cover all these typical search phrases yeah beautiful so rolf <laughs> how do you manage your time in between uh, the regular law firm work and then developing so much content are you only doing content are you doing both how, how are you managing all the stuff together <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm also, of course, working. I'm paid by the hour. So if I don't uh, do hours, I, I'm not paid. So <laughs> I have to work, of course. Um, yeah, it's a question of setting priorities. I also have three children. So <laughs> uh, I am try to be at home in the evening and uh, earlier evening and try to be available on the weekends and not work on the weekends. And so you just have to set priorities. Um, and uh, that's a very important lesson. And one important lesson is that uh, you have to sleep well, because I see a lot of colleagues who uh, try to work until, let's say, 2 a.m. and then get up at 7 a.m. And, and work a lot of hours, but that's not very efficient. Um, and it's easily, they are easily burned out. And they gen, then don't have any private life and maybe die early. And so I don't recommend to do that. <laughs> so um, try to get enough sleep. So that's, that's really my main energy source. Uh, and if you want to see a very cool video about uh, the power of sleep, you can uh, uh, just type in on YouTube, Ariana Huffington, you know, the Huffington Post, and then sleep, Ariana Huffington sleep. And she gave a TED talk about sleep and how she actually bases her whole success on sleeping enough and getting sufficient sleep. So, so that's really a very important lesson that I learned. Um, try not to burn out, try to have, uh, do also things in your spare time and um, not work around the clock and especially get enough sleep let's say eight nine hours minimum and uh, don't sleep less because uh, it will deprive you of your career and your success um, you have much more energy and you're much more creative and you can focus much better if you if you slept enough <laughs> thank you Rolf, so for sharing this because you know i personally feel a uh, a legal profession is treated as where people are supposed to work for 12 hours, 10 hours and things like that. And uh, uh, sleeping or regenerating or having a break is so underrated in our profession that I, I, I am a supporter of if I do not have energy in body, probably I will not uh, be able to come up and show up every day. So if I need to do that, I should take care of myself first. So yes. thank you much thank you so much for sharing this so now now coming back to you know uh, i'm still curious to know how, what what does your regular work day look like or what are the main aspects that you uh, practice in your regular day 
So um, when I come in, um, typically I leave home quite early because I have I have a commute of about 45 minutes and it's uh, there's a lot of traffic on that section. So I start at 6.30 before the traffic jam. <laughs> And uh, so I'm typically in the office uh, 715 or 730. And then I first check my email and see what are the uh, we are as lawyers are deadline driven, of course, we uh, the deadlines are the one and only thing <laughs> that that is important for us or the most important thing. So what deadlines are coming up? Uh, in the next days, typically I try to avoid um, to have deadlines the same day. I try to uh, finish the work for things that have a deadline uh, before the deadline. <laughs> That's a very important time management rule for me um, because then you are much less stressed out and the team is less stressed out and it's much more easy to work basically. And so I'm looking at what is uh, what has to be done uh, over the next uh, days um, to, to, to not come into this situation uh, that you have a deadline coming up the same day. And um, so I prioritize these um, pieces of work basically and start working on this. And in the morning, I typically try to not have telephone calls. I shut down Outlook a lot of times. I shut down all messengers and try just to focus on the actual work that has to be done. And then uh, I always try to have lunch and typically leave for lunch uh, because uh, it's for me, it's important to also at least once a day to have some fresh air and <laughs> uh, be somewhere else. And then um, I after lunch, I typically try to schedule my phone calls and uh, clients that I have to call. And then in the afternoon, I sometimes also try to find another time slot for actual work on the files, or um, I have um, client meetings. Uh, yeah, typically in the afternoon, I try to have client meetings or yeah, have another slot for work. And the content creation, uh, you have to, I try to batch this. Um, I try to have, uh, to always have, let's say one afternoon uh, in the week where I just uh, shut down everything else and just focus on content, writing articles or um, recording videos or um, yeah, writing scripts or um, recording podcasts and these kinds of things. Amazing, Rolf. I love the way how you you know divided uh, how you divide your day into uh, different aspects. Like there is a time for focused work, then there is a time for uh, regeneration, and there is a time for uh, handling all the. I think. Uh, the work which is not focused work like phone calls and things like that and then there is a specific time slot for content creation i think every lawyer or every entrepreneur should implement uh, i call this time boxing techniques where we box a particular time for something specific so thank you so much for sharing a good example of how you do that stuff so i think it would be helpful for all the young entrepreneurs Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Rolf, uh, uh, to conclude, can you share some key takeaways? I would say specifically for people who want to start with content marketing and how, sh uh, what should their strategy be and some key takeaways for them. So, yeah. Yes, uh, maybe the most important key takeaway is uh, content creation is really important. Uh, and uh, let's say in our field, 99% uh, of all law firms don't do good content creation. Maybe they hire a um, video creator and then create two or three really polished videos that don't really help because then they don't continue to do that. So be consistent, try to publish content consistently. Uh, and even if the quality is not perfect, you will get better at it. Just start and publish regularly. So that's a real important takeaway. Consistency and just start with it. <laughs> don't 
contemplate or something, just start. <laughs> and uh, second takeaway, as I mentioned, uh, for me personally, um, get enough regeneration, sleep enough, uh, don't work over hours too much, don't work more than 12 hours a day. That's deadly, so don't do it. <laughs> And um, if you have trouble, um, then just work less and charge more. So <laughs> you can still get your money uh, that way. So yeah, that's probably the second most important uh, takeaway. And then yeah, maybe connected to this, try to really find time slots, shutting down all other things and just find three, four hours a day slots where where nobody is disturbing you where nobody can call you where you don't have the email ping ping new message or something <laughs> so um, that's also important because you can get in four hours of this concentrated focus time you can get more more work done than uh, the whole day if you are constantly also parallel looking at your outlook and everything else and taking phone calls and these kinds of things. So um, it's much more productive if you have a four hour time slot where you focus compared to 12 hours, uh, always pling pling on the side. <laughs> Perfect, Rolf. I think in a such simplified manner, you have given so, so many key takeaways. I'll just try to reiterate it for the listeners. So the first is, start just don't wait start whatever you want to start or in whichever field you want to start content marketing just start second be consistent consistency is the key even if the quality is not good in the beginning it's absolutely all right but consistency is the key so that we can learn and develop uh, and expand our own uh, uh, selves uh, third just have a focused time slot with you where you can work without any other distraction and this will give more productivity it is absolutely important and fourth and the last regenerate and take care of yourself so that you can be in full action the next day so that is also very important stay happy <laughs> that is <Yes>. something <laughs> <laughs> especially in these times during the COVID situation it's important for mental health as well to get enough sleep and regenerate <laughs> yeah absolutely so thank you so much Rolf for giving all the valuable in uh, information I think thank you so much on behalf of me and on behalf of all the listeners I think we have learned so much today from you so thank you so much for being here thank you so much for being on the show <laughs> Hey there, thank you for attending today's session. If you liked our conversation, do follow our channel and consider sharing it with a friend. My name is Prigya Arora, daughter of inspiring parents, alumna of IIT Kharagpur, engineer turned lawyer and entrepreneur, and now founder of PA Legal, where we help creators and innovators protect their intellectual property. Thank you.